Welcome to the Inside Story. I'm Billy Hollowell, and today we're going to break down three quick stories here, important stories, interesting and very different developments on a variety of topics. I am joined by Christian Post reporter John Brown. How's it going today? Good, Billy. Good to be with you. Well, as always, you are doing incredible work over at the Christian Post, and I want to kind of go through a couple of these stories that you recently worked on because they all are very interesting for different reasons. The first story centers on Elon Musk. He recently commented on some pretty intriguing statements about Western civilization and Christianity. And so I'll let you tell us the story. Take us through what he commented on and what he had to say. Well, yeah, it started a couple days after Christmas. Uh, a British Christian rapper who goes by the name Zuby said he thinks that the West is, quote, absolutely screwed if it loses Christianity because it's basically the foundation of our society. Uh, the rapper went on to say that Christianity has sort of been like the West's immune system uh, and that it's formed a her- herd immunity that has protected both Christians and non-Christians. And he said you can't just have a cultural and moral vacuum because it goes against the laws of human nature. He said a lot of forces are trying to tear down Western culture, and he doesn't think it's going to end well. And Musk, who likes to reply to things on X sometimes, uh, he was pretty brief in his response, but he wrote, I think you're probably right. And of course, anytime Musk uh, interacts with a tweet, he, he it tends to go viral, which is what happened here. Yeah, well, and I think it, it also begs the, the secondary question here, because he's commenting, obviously, on this very important issue. We know that Christianity, at least in the mainstream, has sort of gone out of favor, that nominal Christianity has sort of been pushed um, to the side. Fewer people are calling themselves Christians, and that's a whole other podcast topic. Um, But but he has also spoken on the issue of Jesus in the past. And so I think people want to maybe know, hey, what has he said, and how does it comport maybe with this particular message? Yeah, he has said some interesting things about faith in Jesus before. Um, He said, in an interview about a decade ago that he doesn't really worship anything and he's just focused on devoting his life to advancing humanity. But he also told the Babylon Bee in a podcast a couple years ago that he admires things that Jesus taught and he even sort of suggested that he'd be willing to be saved, as he put it. But he's also tweeted about being okay with going to hell, so it's it's hard to tell where his heart is. Yeah, and I think, you know, here we are talking about stories from a journalistic perspective, from the faith perspective, you know, praying for people who are in those questioning places, right? He's not saying definitively that he's not interested at all, uh, but he's giving some mixed messages. And, you know, look, when somebody like him, if somebody like him does embrace Jesus, the the impact of that is monumental. And we're seeing a lot of that happen um, in Hollywood and, and in other sec- sectors of late. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, but I want to move on to a second story that you covered. And this one's really interesting because it involves a Christian university. The Federal Trade Commission basically hit Grand Canyon University with a lawsuit recently. What's the story on this lawsuit? Yeah, well, it's important to note that Grand Canyon is the largest Christian university in the U.S., uh, and the FTC hit them, as you said, with a lawsuit late last month that claimed the school was misrepresenting the cost of its doctoral program. Uh, the allegations are sort of similar to those that the Department of Education gave when they slapped the school with $37 million fine last fall. And uh, the school leadership is claiming that the two departments are basically working together to go after them. Wow. And, you know... <laughs> When you look at when you look at this, you have obviously two different sides of this. You have the government side, and then you have the university, and they're not, as you said, they're not really backing down here. Did you find like what did what have you found interesting about their response to this so far, Grand Canyon? Well, they're responding to this latest thing to the in the same way that they responded uh, to the Department of Education. They're saying, you know, the actions the feds have taken against them are wrong, that they've done nothing wrong, they've been transparent, and that they're being unfairly targeted. And uh, one of the things in the FTC lawsuit that they were upset about is that Grand Canyon presented itself as a nonprofit university. And the president was very upset, the president of Grand Canyon, Brian Mueller, he was very upset about that because he said that the IRS did approve them to be a nonprofit, as did the state of Arizona. Some other entities approved it. And it wasn't until later that the Department of Education didn't. And then after the department uh, declined to approve it, they did stop advertising themselves as that, even though they thought that was unfair. 
So there are so many different layers to this, and they're just very upset about the whole situation. Well, and it's obviously going to play out now in court, and I know you'll continue to cover that one. Uh, but this last one, honestly, I find it to be one of the most interesting stories of late. Obviously, these battles going on within and between denominations over a variety of issues, cultural issues, one of them being you know, same-sex relations, same-sex marriage, gay marriage. And the Methodist Church in Great Britain, um, they've released this inclusive language guide, and, and it's really gotten a lot of attention. <laughs> So let's just start there. Why why has this inclusive language guide been making so many headlines? Yeah, well, this thing came out early last month. It's pages long, and it's getting a lot of attention because not only does it go into great detail about how Methodists should use people's preferred pronouns, use anti-racist language, and so on, but it even takes issue with phrases and terms like husband and wife. And it says words like that may sound inoffensive, but they make assumptions about people that might not be their reality. Huh. Okay. So that's in, that is interesting. And obviously because of the nature of these issues and how flammable they are culturally, people are reacting to that. They gave some alternatives to terminology in that, in that document. Can you run through a couple of the other, <laughs> the other ones that they put in there? Yeah. They just listed less gender specific words like parent, partner, child, carer, things like that. And then they also took issue with things like, uh, they call it ageist language. They say you shouldn't call people old. You should call them older. I mean, they, they were very nitpicky in terms of like what words were acceptable and what ones weren't. And it was just very strange. Yeah, it, it is strange. And I think, you know, people are looking for truth and honesty, right? Not, not confusion or language that isn't precise. I, I think obviously anybody who's gone to college or anybody who's gone through life, you know, they, this is emphasized from an early age. You want to be specific. You want specificity. You don't want um, a lack of clarity. And in particular, within a denomination or a church, I think when this happens where you sort of have this dumbing down or watering down a very specific language into something else based on the feelings that somebody might have versus the reality of what's going on, you get these reactions. And, and I think that's why we've seen, as you were saying, this story really blow up, not only in the UK, but in America as well. The final question on this, why, why does why does it matter? You know, why do you think this matters to so many people? I think it matters to anyone who takes words seriously. You know, Christianity for Christians, our faith is based on words, and I think a lot of Christians would agree that the way we communicate about our faith and reality is very important. I mean, husband and wife are very foundational concepts, and I think uh, Father Calvin Robinson, he's a conservative Anglican, he raked them over the coals for this guidance. He said they're basically giving into Marxist definitions and, and views of language, and they're trying to smash heteronormativity. And he said the church is going to have to choose between that and upholding God's order, and he encouraged them to pick one. Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be interesting to watch how these battles play out. This is just the beginning. A lot of other denominations and churches are having these fights right now, not just about language, but about official theology and policy and how churches are going to conduct themselves. And so, as always, John, appreciate you bringing us these stories today. Thank you. Everyone else, make sure you tune in next week for another episode of The Inside Story. We'll have more stories for you then. And in the meantime, head over to The Christian Post to read all the news you need to hear, read, and see. We've got podcasts and plenty more over at The Christian Post. We'll see you next week.